So this lager, it isn't really lager. Kvaik Lutri Yeast allows home brewers to make pseudo lagers far quicker and easier than you can ever do when doing a true lager. You won't have to blow the bank with expensive temperature control gear and you won't have to use specific lager yeast. Although I will tell you now that a lager purist would say the beer that I've made here isn't a lager whatsoever. But smell and taste wise, I'd say this is very close. So why does it matter that this crisp, clear beer that tastes and looks like a lager isn't a lager? Lager is one of those types of beers that is quite strict in its style guide. The primary fermentation is using bottom fermenting yeast. That allows the beer to be incredibly clear because there's no yeast in suspension. Pilsner is the style of lager that normally comes to mind when you think of the beer. It's pale, it's clear, it's kind of what big Pilsner brands like Coors and Budweiser, you know, people who might argue aren't even making lager again. Uh, that's the kind of beer that they're making, you know, that's what it's based on anyway. Lagers generally are crisp and are mid-range ABV and um, are just really easy to drink. They're not heavily hopped, but they do have some spicy floral notes to them. True lager involves a process of lagering, which really makes the beer very clear. This is where you drop the temperature of the beer every day for a few days between two and four degrees Celsius until you get the beer down to minus one degrees. Then once it's down to minus one degree, you then leave it for between four and 12 weeks. Now, a lot of home brewers do not have the gear to allow this. Um, the benefit of doing it is that the beer is extra clean because there's very little floating in the beer at this point because everything has dropped right to the bottom that isn't the beer. Certainly for the budget brewer like myself, there is a lot of things that put me off uh, making a true lager, um, the equipment that I need, and also the time that you have to wait um, before you're able to drink any of your lager. And so a pseudo lager using Kvike Lutra yeast is super appealing to me and I just had to make one and I'm super proud of it. This beer was ready to drink within three weeks and it's been um, about three months since I first bottled it and it's only got better with time. So this is how I made it. Water is an incredibly important element when it comes to making a lager and I knew that I could not use my tap water for this as it's very heavy and so I used bottle water and so I didn't need to do any water treatment. It was actually really nice to just on the brew day just pour all of the water that I needed straight from bottles. And uh, it's definitely something that I'm going to try again. So once all the water was in the kettle, I then got it up to my mash temperature of 65 degrees Celsius before adding my malt. As this was my first attempt at making a pseudo lager, I wanted to make the recipe incredibly simple. And so I only used two types of grain, my base malt, which was 3.9 kilograms of Pilsner malt. And then I also added 1.5 kilograms of Vienna malt. This was to add a little bit more color and also flavor. I mashed this for an hour whilst keeping my temperature at 65 degrees Celsius. I've dropped the mash temperature that I normally use to 65 recently. I used to do 67, but I feel like I'm getting much better results was 65 degrees Celsius. Whilst the mash was going on, I prepared my hop additions. I went for just a single hop with this lager, which was a hop that I'm definitely going to mispronounce. Hallertur Herzbrecher. Hallertur's Herzbrecher. <laughs> it's a German hop with balanced fruity and spicy notes. Um, it's very commonly used in lagers and it felt like a perfect one to use for my first try at making a pseudo lager. I used 50 grams at the start of my hour long boil. Normally I'm a big fan of doing a 30 minute boil, but because this is a lager, I really wanted this to be as clear as possible. So I know that doing a longer boil results in a clearer beer. And so I went for a 60 minute boil. 
My final hop additions were 15 grams at 30 minutes, another 15 grams 15 minutes before the end of the boil, and then right at the end of the boil, I added another 25 grams of hops. 15 minutes before the end of the boil, I also added my copper cooling coil, so to sanitize it. 10 minutes before the end of the boil, I added yeast nutrients, so to help kick off the fermentation really healthily. And I also added Irish moss. This was to help keep the beer clearer. Once I finished the boil, I immediately started cooling down to my target temperature of 20 degrees Celsius. Uh, this is on the colder end when it comes to Kvike Lutri yeast, although you can ferment it even colder than 20 degrees Celsius. I wanted to go for the lower end because this is less likely for Lutra to put out any esters, and so it's going to have a cleaner um, taste and be a bit more like a traditional lager. I left the beer to ferment at around 20 degrees Celsius for two weeks before I then bottled it. I also put some of it into um, mini kegs, uh, which I used for a party on New Year's Eve, which uh, was very much welcomed by the host. So here it is. My first ever pseudo lager, looking really clear. You can see me through it. <laughs> I've kept these bottles that I'm using in this video um, in the fridge for about three weeks to try and help um, really make it as clear as possible. Uh, kegging this would have probably helped it become even clearer, but you know, bottling is the best option that I have because I don't have any of the kegging gear. <laughs> I could have maybe made it even more carbonated than what it is. It's got a nice head and uh, bubbles, uh, which helps it look like a real lager, which I know it isn't. <laughs> yeah, very clean smell to it. I'm getting no esters from the yeast, um, just the smell of the hops, which um, I think you get a bit of a sweet kind of spicy smell from it. So taste wise, very clean, um, a very smooth mouthfeel to it. It tastes lagery. Uh, <laughs> there's only so many ways I can say that it tastes like um, a decent lager. I know it's not truly one, <laughs> but this does taste quite close. An interesting element of this beer is that ingredients wise, it's the cheapest beer that I've ever made. Um, so certainly if I'm brewing for parties again, then I'm going to be making this. I've got my sister's wedding coming up this year and I'm going to make uh, some of this uh, as a wedding gift. Um, and also so that I'm not blowing the bank uh, making beer that will just get drank very quickly at wedding. <laughs> Certainly when you take into account all the equipment that you don't need um, when making a pseudo lager, I think that this is 95% there um, to feeling like a lager. Uh, I'm sure that uh, someone will be screaming in the comments about the fact that I've said the word lager too much, despite the fact that this isn't a lager. I know it's not really a lager, okay, but uh, it's pretty close. <laughs> if you'd like to learn more about why Kvike yeast is absolutely brilliant for home brewers, then watch this next video.